Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited because today we are going to make part two of our series of applying a dipole correction to uh, a structure we made last video using Quantum Espresso. And so what I'll do is I'll begin this video by giving a brief overview of what we did in the last video because it has been some time. Uh, I apologize for the long delay. I've been really caught up in some other things I'm working on, and I have managed to find uh, a few spare minutes right now to do this, and I figure, I figured, you know what, if anyone's been waiting, I don't want to make them wait any longer. Um, so let's do a brief recap of what we did last time, and then I'll quickly give like a small overview of what we'll do this time. We will then do that, and everything will be great. Okay. So last time what we did was we cut a surface slab of gold. We cut the 111 surface, which we've done in many past videos. Uh, but now we are applying it to study the adsorption energy of a fluorine atom on this gold 111 surface. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what we did was we applied the fluorine atom. We placed it on the gold surface. And what we noticed before placing the fluorine atom on the gold surface was that the electrostatic potential of our system basically look like this, <coughs> excuse me, and the potential region in the vacuum is flat. And this is basically what, what, what you want because, uh, well, essentially there's no atoms there, there's, there's no, there's nothing for the, there's no terms in the potential at this, corresponding to this distance. And if you rewatch the last video, just for a refresher, uh, you'll, this Z dimension, this X axis, uh, will make much more sense. Basically, this 0 to 30 is the size of our unit cell in the z dimension, and we have our gold unit cell basically sitting in the middle of that, our gold cluster, or our, our surface slab, or monolayer, essentially. Well, I guess you can say it's four monolayers, and you can see basically each gold atom, or each layer, the potential for each layer here. And um, then what we did was we added a fluorine atom, and the fluorine atom changed. Uh, it basically created a dipole, uh, which made it so that the potential, the electrostatic potential in the vacuum was no longer flat. And uh, this basically uh, misrepresents, by, by having this potential not be flat, it misrepresents the electrostatic potential here, which is in our system, which is of our interest. And so, for example, if this were actually flat here, then this uh, peak here, which corresponds to the fluorine atom, might be a little deeper. And so if you're misrepresenting this potential, then whatever values you were going to report in your scientific publication might be misrepresented. And so what you want to do is you want to correct for this uh, induced dipole, and you do that by actually applying a dipole of equal and opposite magnitude to cancel it out. And that's what we're going to do right now. So if you've forgotten, Completely everything that's gone gone on in the last video. Just pause this video, open up a new window, watch that video briefly, scan through it, come back here, and we're good to go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply an electric field, which will create a dipole, and then that will cancel out this induced dipole from addition of the add atom on the gold surface. Okay, so let's open up where we were last time, and uh. So here I have three input files. I have a pw.x input file, I have a pp.x input file, and I have an average.x input file. I put a link in the description of the last video. There's an article by a person named Christopher Wolf. They, uh, I, I modeled my input, input files off of the input he has at the end of his article. Uh, so if you want to uh, check that article out. I'll, I will also add it in the description in this video. I suggest you check that out. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is open our, you don't have to change any of these two input files, uh, but we do have to change our PWX input file. So let's open it up. So I already applied the changes. I will just briefly go through what they are. So in the control name list, I added the tags TE field, and you have to set it equal to true and the dip field also set that equal to true that's the only thing that is changing in the control name list between this and last video in the systems name list we added four new parameters 
we added the amplitude of the electric field, we added its direction, so we're going to apply it in the z axis, and we added the Emax position and EO preg position. Uh, and for these parameters and how they are set in the unit cell, I drew a sketch last video and gave a small, very brief lecture on how this all works and like why this value and this value sum to one. Uh, please rewatch that if you don't like know what I'm talking about. Okay, and so in the sawtooth potential I, I drew last video, there was some slope associated with the sawtooth potential as it moved through your unit cell. That's what this E amplitude is. And right now I have it set as a default value. And one thing I want to mention to you all is that this value is in Hartree. So any change in this is pretty significant. That's why we have it so small. So for example, one Hartree is like over 22 electron volts. So this is like 0.02 electron volts. Let me see if that's if my math is correct. So it's like 22.7 times 0 0.001. Yeah, point, this is how many electron volts is our slope of the sawtooth potential. Okay, so or it probably covers per uh, every time it moves. Anyways, so this is the only thing we actually have to change. The rest of the input file is exactly how it was the last time. Uh, there's a couple things I want to mention as I do usually in these videos. The structure of gold I'm using here has not been converged with respect to E-cut, it has not been converged with respect to K-points, and it has not been converged with respect to Gaussian smearing or any type of smearing. I think I don't think you would want to use Gaussian smearing for a metal. You might want to use the other one, uh, it's MV smearing. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I was reading an article on that the other day, but it uh, there's a better smearing for metals. Uh, so you, you want to converge E cut and K points. And then once you've converged those two, you want to converge smearing. Uh, and basically I'm just showing you here in this calculation, what you would do after that point. Okay, so let's assume I've converged E cut and K points. And then using those converged E cut and K points, I've converged my smearing. Okay, what I would then do is I would do a variable cell relaxation process, which I also don't do here but I'm just telling you what other steps you need to do in addition to what I'm doing here. Okay, but let's say I've done all that. I have my optimal nuclear geometries. I'm converged with all my electronic structure parameters. Now I want to apply the dipole. So what I've done is I've added the TE field and dip field to the control name list. And I've added these four parameters to the systems name list. And what we're going to do now is we are going to just exit out. Oh, let me actually save and exit just in case. And what I'm going to do is quickly just manually call the PWX program to see if it crashes. Okay, it doesn't. So what I'm now going to do is quickly just submit a job to the computational cluster. And this will take only a second, I believe. Let's briefly look at the input file, or the sorry, the input, the output file. So here it's a, it's applying the van der Waals dispersion that I included, because usually you want to include those things when you have like add atoms or add molecules on your surface. Okay, it's entering the SCF cycle. Okay, and it looks like it finished. Okay, our job is done. We have converged in 17 iterations. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'll just open x.plot in right now so you can see this file. But like I said, this, this file was, uh, I basically just took it right from Christopher Wolf's file, uh, and I, I got the link to the article in this video description and the last one. And what I'm going to do now is run this program by doing pp.x, x.plot in, x.plot out. Okay, and this takes just a second. Before you run this program, make sure you have some directory made and you you tell x you tell ppx to put whatever result you want into the temporary directory. Now I'm going to run average. So this is what this file looks like. It's going to go into this temporary directory and go into this plot.data file and basically do its magic. So average.x 
x dot average in, x dot average out. This takes only a second. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this data. Okay, so I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename this as average 001 dot dat, where this 001 corresponds to the magnitude of the electric field we applied. Okay, so now let's just for one second recall what we had. So here is before we added the fluorine atom to the gold surface. You can see the electrostatic potential in the vacuum regions is flat. We added the fluorine atom, which now comes about here. You can see its presence basically through this dip in the electrostatic potential, and it caused an induced dipole so that the electrostatic potential in the vacuum is no longer flat. We're applying an electric field to cancel this, and let's see how well it canceled it. So I'm now going to, in addition to plotting the old data, I'm going to plot the new data, <clears throat> which is going to be 001. I have this conversion factor here, which I do talk about last time, which converts from angstrom to Bohr, which is important here. And let's go ahead and plot this. So, oops, let me just exit out very quickly and change this from uncorrected to corrected. So you can see here that it did correct for the it did correct for the induced dipole a little bit. You can see that the electrostatic potential in the vacuum is more flat. Uh, the problem is that it still has a little bit of uh, uh, slope to it. And what I think, why I think this is happening is because we didn't exactly cancel out the dipole that was induced through addition of the, of the fluorine atom. And so what that means is that we need to add more slope to our sawtooth potential. Basically, we need to find the slope that will actually cancel out this induced dipole. So let's go back to our program. Uh, let's go into pw.x. And, <clears throat> excuse me, let's change the dipole from 0 0.001 to 0 0.002. So now our sawtooth potential sorry, not our dipole, our slope of our potential. Uh, so the slope of our sawtooth potential now will have, will have twice the slope as it did previously, which isn't that big of a difference. Uh, so let's save this, but it, but it might be the difference we need. And let's, let's rerun the calculation. Okay, just check it briefly, see it's running. Okay. We are going, and it looks like we are entering into the SCF cycle. Okay, we're on the 11th iteration now. We are converging. You can see the estimated SCF accuracy is, de is uh, decreasing. I think it should be increasing. Anyways, okay, we have converged, and let us now just run the previous procedures for plot.in and average.in. So just you can just scroll up in your Linux command history and find them. Okay. Let us now uh, just rename this and instead of average 001, this will be average 002. Move this over here. And Let's now include this additional, in addition to the previous uh, plots. So we will call this corrected 0 0.001 atomic units. Let's call this one corrected 0 0.002 atomic units. Okay, let's plot this. And you can see here, that we are getting a bit closer, this green line is slightly more corrected than the red line because we've, we, we are canceling out more of the uncorrected dipole. And I would say that actually this, this one looks good. I would say that the green line 
what's good enough. And so you can tell like here, for example, uh, the dipole correction in here made a big deal. Uh, you can see that with the dipole correction, you get, I would say, a quantitatively different uh, value for the potential of this layer. And although this isn't the biggest dipole, I imagine, uh, probably in that you would need to correct for it, when you're doing actual research uh, and you're having, you're depositing like entire layers, especially like layers of cesium on surfaces, uh, you can significantly change the work function of your surface and you will create a pretty large dipole and you'll need to correct for it. And so if you correct for your dipole and it is not correcting to the degree you need it to correct to, I suggest you do what I do and increase or decrease the amplitude of your uh, sawtooth potential. Okay. And so once you get to this point, uh, what you now can do is you would basically take the total energy of your structure here and that would be the energy of your adsorbate substrate system and then what you would do is you would subtract from this value you would subtract the value of here i'll oh, open up uh paint so like what you would do how does this like how does this relate to adsorption energy let's just Let's get a little thicker brush here. How does this relate to adsorption? Adsorption energy. Okay, so what you do is you've done all the corrections I talk about and you get your final uh, structure. Um, so you, you have it corrected here. You then take the energy of this structure, which we'll call the energy of uh, E absorbate and your surface complex. You subtract from it the energy of the bare surface. Minus the energy of the adsorbate. Okay, and that's how you'd get your absorption energy, or at least how I think you would get it. And uh, so for example, if your adsorbate was like an entire molecule, you would calculate the energy of that molecule, you'd calculate the energy of the surface, then you'd calculate the energy of them both. Uh, in the cases for, in, in, in these cases right here, I would make sure that you optimize and everything you like uh so for example if you have a surface and you optimize all of the layers in your surface you want to make sure you optimize all of the layers in your absorbate so for example here you'd want to like optimize all layers and then the same thing for over here you don't want to you basically what i'm saying is you want to be consistent you don't want to optimize half the layers in this structure and then all the layers in the structure. Uh, and I would place like the optimized atom, like I, I would I would basically optimize everything before you put it on the surface and then optimize it again. Um, that'd be an interesting study. I'm not too familiar with what, what would be the best thing to do in those cases. Uh, so, I mean, maybe if you have experience, you can leave information down in the comments. That would definitely help me out. Um, but in any case, uh, this is how you apply a dipole correction in quantum espresso. I'd like to thank Christopher Wolf for his article. Uh, it helped me get to the point I am now uh, here. And let me go back into the input file and just re-go over everything. So when you want to apply the uh, electric field for dipole corrections in quantum espresso, you need to include these uh, tags in the controlled name list and set them equal to true. You want to apply these uh, tags in the system's name list. And if your dipole is not canceling, I would suggest try varying E amplitude. Uh, you want to make sure your structure is not within the region uh, that is E opreg minus E max position. I talked about this in the last video, but basically in this region, which would be uh, between 0 0.05 
and minus 0 0.05, you do not want uh, to put your structure in that region because that's where the slope of the sawtooth potential changes. You basically don't want the change in slope of the sawtooth potential to be in the same region of your charge density. Uh, and you can check out the quantum espresso forums for all the gory details regarding that. Uh, in any case, I hope this was helpful. I hope, uh, well, I guess that's it. I hope you guys have a good day, guys and girls. Uh, thanks for watching my videos. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. I really like hearing from all of you. You guys have had some really good video ideas, and so keep them coming. Okay, take care.